Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are back with the most recent Genshin Impact lore reading session. We just finished up checking out the drip marketing for version 3.4. Prior to that, we went through the, the lore for Nahida and just kind of going through her lore while we had the chance. And uh, this is the last thing that I'm going to be jumping into before we officially start version 3.3 content. Following this, I'm going to be jumping into the Genius Invocation TCG, which is currently out right now. I kind of want to focus on this, get as far as I can with uh, making up for the week that I haven't been able to stream it, start working on my official deck before we shift to the Archon Quest interlude chapter with the Wanderer, the Traveler, Nahida, Dottore, and a bunch of other stuff. So wanted to focus on the card game first, then we're going to shift to the Archon Quest as well. So today we're going to be checking out Layla's lore. She is the last of the newly released characters of this patch. Interesting to learn a bit about like her alter ego, right? Her sleepwalking side of her, which is very interesting about her overall. So without further ado, Layla, birthday, December 19th. Her birthday is literally in nine days from the time of this recording. Affiliated with the... I always have a trouble pronouncing this. Uh, affiliated with Ratawa... Ratawa Heist? Darshan with a cryo vision. A Ratawa Heist student who specializes in theoretical astrology, a.k.a mona would love to be friends with you heavily prone to sleepwalking and locked in a grinding war with sleep deprivation the problem of restful slumber is a most troubling one to her okay aka i'm tired all the time let's start character details the tower heist darshan of the six darshans under the sumeru academia is dedicated to the study of illuminationism each of the six darshan focuses on a different field of study illuminationism then is centered around astrology and astronomy learning of the cosmos that has clutched the world in its embrace since time immemorial it is among the researchers of illuminationism that we find layla though she has only recently enrolled she has already gained a great many nicknames for herself she has been called the sleepwalking eccentric the human calculator and even the heaven sent thesis by those who know her as the days go by her titles only seem to grow in number it's funny that they call her a human calculator and um garcia in fontaine like the member of the daydreamers club is working on a numbering machine so i feel like she's his answer <laughs> You know what I mean? Like she would be perfect for that man's project. You know, she's the, basically a mathematician and he's trying to make a mathematician device of some sort. So uh, yeah, that, when they said human calculator, I feel like that's what he's trying to make. He's either trying to make a calculator or a supercomputer AI or something that can calculate things. Anyways, let's carry on. Character story one. Holy shit, these are really long. My God. There are two kinds of people in the halls of academia. The first holds themselves with an air of calmness and mastery, be it experimentation or dissertations. This person always makes whatever they're doing look easy. The other kind of person wears their woes on their face, sighs, spills from their lips as mournful notes while they clutch their tools looking lost. That's actually kind of true. It's either you know what you're doing or you don't know what you're doing. Intermittently, they will jot something down before slashing it out, battling themselves all the way. Layla belongs to the latter category. Category. Being poor of health and preferred of sleep is not uncommon amongst researchers, but Layla takes it to a whole new level. The bags of exhaustion hanging beneath her eyes and the weariness burned across her features makes it impossible for her to hide the stress gnawing at her. Should someone approach her, they will often hear her whispering things like, I don't understand or why, and even whimpering, I'm doomed. These lamentations often earn her a look of sympathy. Lament! The halls of the academia exist not just as an altar of knowledge to dedicated students, but also the source of their nightmares. Countless among their numbers have suffered failed experiments and watched their dissertations get torn apart. Rumor has it that, unable to bear the rigors and pressures of school, many students each year choose to depart before they graduate, quitting before their journey is complete. At first glance, Layla might seem like she's hanging on the edge of departing herself, but in actuality, she has already outlasted several classmates who enrolled the same year as her. When seeking knowledge, talent is useful, but perseverance is essential. Yo, it's a war of attrition with these students. She's like, I'll, I'll outlast all. It's like, she's like Genshin Impact Battle Royale Edition for the Academia. Jeez. All right. Character story two. Dude, these are really long passages. Holy cannoli. This one's even longer than the last one. 
Okay, anyways. Character story two. The reason behind Layla's poor physical health and insomnia can be traced back to a single factor, academic pressure. All students of the Darshan are required to commit to their studies, complete their essays, and pass their examinations or dissertations. Though this task seems simple, simple does not mean easy, and the investment demanded of students comes in the form of time and effort. Unfortunately for Layla, she is always slower at finishing her papers than her peers. She often spends a great deal of time contemplating and worrying about the validity of her theses. Is the content overly simplistic compared to that written by her classmates? Are her calculations truly accurate? And if so, are they as concise as they can be? She feels that, as a student of the most prestigious Darshan, she cannot afford to slack off in her studies. At the same time, she dares not commit her writing to in haste. Seized by hesitation, time often slips through her fingers and leaves her staring at blank papers of her work without having written a word. Because of this, she often finds herself working through the night and leaving sleep for the day. Yet, with the break of dawn, she often finds herself assailed by new assignments, causing her to descend into a vicious spiral. Uh, I want to say really quick that I relate to this so much. I, as a content creator, something that I've like really gotten terrible at is not really catching up or finishing on a lot of the stuff that I want to do for my channels, whether it's uploading things or starting something that I say I'm going to start or doing a stream that I want to do. And the reason for that is because I, over the years, I have like doubled and tripled down on a bunch of different things that I want to do, particularly when it comes to streaming games and wanting to turn those streams into videos for YouTube, like uh, Persona or Kingdom Hearts or Catherine or Halo or whatever. And I get so much of that streaming time done that it creates this big backlog of videos that I need to edit, like Genshin, like Honkai, like Persona 5, like Persona 5 Royal that still isn't uploaded yet. And like the more I get done, the more of a backlog I have. And the more of that backlog I have, makes me just not want to do it because even if I do one, two, three hours of editing in a day, I feel like I'm not making any progress, especially with every stream of Genshin that I do. That's another video added to that backlog that I'm already like a year and a half behind on. So it creates this work paralysis mentality that I have that I'm so overwhelmed by everything that I want. And there's so many things that I can't do that I want to do, because then if I do it, it's going to add to that backlog of stuff that I have to edit and put out and, you know, focus on getting out at a timely fashion. So for me, I relate so much to just the paralysis feeling of not doing anything because you don't know where to start. And even when you start and you do something and you finish something, it doesn't feel like you made any progress because there's a mountain of work that's still unfinished behind you. So like I relate to this so much. It's something that I really want to work on, especially going into the new year for the first time ever i've made like goals with actions that i want to do to achieve those goals instead of instead of saying i want to stream more in 2023 i say to myself okay what actions am i going to do to reach that goal and like one of the big things for me for this year is like i want to go back to variety gaming well how am i going to do that what actions am i going to do to ensure that i play more games well first off i'm going to decide what games are and aren't worth streaming because I can't make content out of everything and it's not healthy to do that also I want some things for me and not everything needs to be an opportunity for me to grow my channel or grow my streams or share my experience with other people and I have to pretty much give up some things in order for that to be a reality because it clearly hasn't been working up until this point so I also have to set boundaries for myself so overall I just really relate to like this entire thing that Layla's going through all right so let's continue as such her habits have afflicted her body with abnormal side effects. Now she often raises at night wandering. Upon sleeping, she often finds herself unable to remember what she has done or where she has gone. The rumored symptom of this phenomenon is known as sleepwalking, described by her peers. From how her classmates have described her sleepwalking, it is as if she is suddenly manifested with neither a hint nor reason in a certain place. Mysteriously, none of them have been able to fully explain where she goes after or what she does either. Besides sleepwalking, she has also discovered another strange recurrence in her life. Every time she awakes from sleepwalking, she finds her unwritten papers from the day before fully completed, meticulous, and accurate calculations included. That's insane. Even the handwriting appears to be hers. Stranger still, the author of her papers has also a habit of viciously critiquing the arguments and experimental methods of others. Damn. Okay, so uh, her alter ego is a little uh, is a little critical of others. They're like, oh, you idiot. You don't know what you're doing. Let me help you out there. 
Layla simply could not fathom herself committing these acts and found herself suspecting that someone was messing with her. However, upon recalling her experiences led by her home to the halls of the Darshan, she couldn't think of no one with the proper motive. The term heaven sent thesis is often used in Sumeru to describe an impossible miracle. And if what Layla had been experiencing did not count as a heaven sent thesis, she didn't know what did. Did a miracle truly grace her? Did the stars themselves, moved by her dedication to the study, repay her with a blessing? Regardless, the star's blessing has solved several of her woes. Now the papers she needs to write for several classes can be handed in without additional worries in the end. As for the other details, well, it is probably best left for when she has the energy to care. Presently, she has classes to prepare for. Yeah, so she basically got a little, a little assistant at the cost of her energy constantly being low like i don't know if i would want that i hate the feeling of of waking up tired and like not being well rested it's like this state of being where you wake up and for like three to four hours after you wake up you still feel like shit. it's the worst feeling in the world man i hate that feeling more than anything i would not want to get my papers done but to be in that state perpetually like i wouldn't want that that's more of a curse in my opinion all right character story three after pushing through her heavy backlog of <laughs> that backlog man i'm telling you <laughs> after pushing through her heavy backlog of assignments even layla will find time to decompress in her spare time she enjoys heading to port almost by boat to wander the streets there traveling merchants and vagabonds place their stalls and practice their trades offering all manner of interesting trinkets and showcasing amazing skills infusing the perpetually exhausted Layla with a sense of refreshment. She has witnessed the folks of the desert testing themselves in thrilling challenges of agility as they score bullseyes through distantly placed apples with throwing darts. That's cool. She met a strange individual who claimed to be capable of flight using a mere carpet. Oh my gosh. Is that like an Aladdin reference? She met a strange individual who claimed to be capable of flight. Using a mere carpet, they managed to levitate off the ground. Yet the one who left the deepest impression on her was a stall owner who visited passerbys to participate in a game of luck. Upon his stall, he separated colorful pages worth varying rewards into wooden boxes. In a display of astonishing speed and agility. Oh, is it like the shuffling? The yeah, okay, you're getting scammed right there, lady. In a display of astonishing speed and agility, the owner would shuffle these boxes about and shuffle them from position to position. Afterwards, he would ask those Hello participating again. in the lottery to pick a box. Despite not managing to claim the grand prize during her first few attempts, after a few more tries, Layla began to notice a pattern. Though the stall owner possessed blinding hand speed, she realized that his left thumb barely moved during the shuffling process. Process. Hence, she realized the box nearest to his left thumb would experience the least amount of deviation to that position. Oh my god, what a fucking galaxy brain. After achieving such comprehension, Layla managed to repeatedly win the grand prize. When the curious stall owner discovered how Layla used her insight to peer beyond the mirage of his speed, he found himself overcome with admiration for the girl and offered her a generous bonus reward. For Layla, the reward was a thing of secondary importance. The true pleasure she got was getting to behold the awesome skills that other people possess. Unlike the conservations of the academia, she did not look down upon the arts and trades of those who worked on the streets. Instead, she was thankful to all of the vendors of Port Ormos for the happy memories they granted her. Let's go. Yo, I, I, she's great, man. She's built different. Wow, someone from the academia who appreciates the arts? Who would have thought, you know? Character story four. As her first year in the academia came to an end, Layla listed down her strengths and weaknesses, planning to write a personal assessment for herself. She possessed good observation and estimation skills and was consistently capable of tracking the shifting position of the cosmos via the star charts at twice the speed of her peers. Additionally, she considered her skill in mathematics to be acceptable. When faced with simple questions, she could calculate the answers in the blink of an eye without even needing to do an equation in written form. Before even entering the halls of the academia, Layla had a chance encounter with her future mentor. Her mentor had complimented her then, stating that she was a child blessed by the stars with a thirsty capacity 
to seek true knowledge. It was these virtues that gave her the courage to hope and seek education and wisdom in the academia. However, upon stepping foot into the Darshan, she found that her strength was paltry when compared to her peers of the similar age. Only the best of the best can make it into the Darshans, and as such, Layla couldn't help but feel a bit overshadowed. As for shortcomings, Layla found them to be too many to count. For example, her habit of fixating on problems afflicted her with a great deal of indecisiveness. That is me to a T. Moreover, her ability to socialize was also lacking. When involved in discussions, she often struck others as aloof and arrogant due to her reluctance in expressing her views, which led to her having few friends in the Darshan. What diminished her confidence even further was the fact that among the many papers she had submitted, few were actually written by her. Instead, they were products of having the star's blessing. For Layla's perspective, she was an insignificant individual. What she does not know is that her teachers and peers have an entirely different perspective of her. Hey, being mysterious and eccentric comes with being a genius. How does she draw the star chart so fast while we're doing in-field studies? Are her eyes cameras? Wait, she's done with the stellar orbits as well? I have reviewed her papers and the calculations and found the work to be rigorous and thorough. Her logic is ironclad, and some of her ideas are so intricate that I, even as an educator, am surprised. We have a fantastic student on our hands. Some people will always tread forward through life weighed down by their caution, viewing themselves as lacking. They will nevertheless strive on despite the misgivings they have towards themselves. Perhaps it is also perpetual dissatisfaction that spurs them onward, allowing them to surpass their fellows without even noticing. Wow. So in her doubting herself and trying her best, she's blitzing people without even realizing it. I feel like that also keeps her humble because if she realized that people actually think highly of her that might change like her viewpoint and like her methodology of how she gets things done so it's kind of like a blessing in disguise like her doubting herself is essentially giving her the confidence to do her best which is the best amongst even her peers which is great all right character story five there was a girl who was determined smart and modest maybe even a little too modest she always felt that her meager gifts placed her leagues away from achieving true mastery. Yet she yearned for excellence, wanted to stand side by side with the greatest of minds to make her teachers and family proud. Contradictory desires changed her. She was unwilling to let go and unveiled her true self, but also did not want to suffer the drudgery of a mundane life. With the passage of time, she felt overwhelmed by the barrage of emotions, shame, listlessness, yearning, all these things weighed up upon her psyche and extracted their toll. Eventually, her soul found itself in need of a small outlet, something to give her some breathing room. While her body and mind were awake and aware, she is too chained by woes to be free. So it is when she slumbers that her deeper desires come alive to inhibit her vessel instead. Indulging in bursts of short-lived freedom, gorging herself in all expressions and indulgences that she denied herself while awake. Ah, so it's not as much an alter ego as it is her true self. So there's like a doubtful side of her and like an ambitious side of her. And they don't intersect because w during the day, she doubts herself so much that she suppresses the side of her that's ambitious, that's smart, that yearns for more that when she sleeps, that part of her comes alive and kind of takes over. Hmm, interesting. While sleepwalking, she is beyond the claws of self-doubt and depression, allowing her to easily overcome things like written papers, drawing star charts, and making star logs. Matters that usually mire her in indecision and worry become simple, allowing her to pour out her innermost insights and challenge highly complex questions. This is the release of her long-held desires, but all dreams must come to an end. As her body wakes, she again returns to being an insecure, introverted girl that she was before. Indeed, after waking, she can't even fathom that the intricately calculated equations were created by her own hands. As she is determined and modest while conscious, so too is she sharp and smart while sleepwalking. Both sides belong to the same girl, like a sapling in growth. She is torn between self-doubt and the desire to break free. This imbalance was how her sleepwalking manifested in the first place. Yet no matter which side of her is in control at the moment, the part that is Layla always remains. That is fucking awesome. 
That is so cool. Like initially, I never thought of that. Initially, I thought it was like she had like, you know what I mean? Cause like all these characters have like, you know, a disposition bestowed by a, by a freaking pawn spirit or the spirit of a freaking Yu-Gi-Oh master, like in the body of a general or whatever. So like, I thought this was like a supernatural thing as well, but it's really just her manifesting two sides of the same coin. And one is modest and uh, hesitant. And the other one is galaxy brain and unstoppable. And at the end of the day, it's her no matter what. I really, really like that. All right, let's see. Layla's photo book. Besides the hill of notes, star charts, and journals, Layla's desk also has a thick book filled to the brim with photos. No matter what else occupies the space on her desk, her photo book will always take the most visible spot. The photos that fill the pages of this book were personally taken by Layla. It contains pictures of her home, her parents, her friends, and even the mentor who inspired her to get into the academia in the first place. Each photo is a snapshot of significance to Layla. She used these photos to place in her journal, detailing her experiences and trials that led her from her home to the academia. Each time she goes through her collage of photos, she finds herself still able to remember the burning determination from her past and used it to pierce through in crouching bouts of doubt. Recently, Layla added a new picture that was given. Oh, <gasps> recently, Layla added a new picture she had taken with a certain gold haired traveler. As the picture accumulated one after another, who knows how thick the book might get by the time she finally graduates. Yo, we took a picture with Layla. Let's go. I assume it was during the fantastic fungi frenzy event, right? Because that's the only time we've interacted with her. Yo, that's base. We took a picture with with Bongo Head and Twirly Whirly and Blitz Tara and Pyro One. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, yeah. Kindle Joy. Yeah, let's have uh, a Kindle Joy. In before it was our sister. <laughs> In before she actually took pictures with uh with Lumine. And, you know, it's just vague enough that we think it's us. All right, let's see. All right, Vision. Layla, being a person of easy temperament, rarely gets into arguments with, oh, shit, she popped off on someone and the gods were like, yo, go off, queen. All right, you fucking galaxy brain queen. Here's your vision. Layla, being a person of easy temperament, rarely gets into arguments with others. One time, however, she broke the norm and found herself enraged in a heated debate. During a discussion from a class on theoretical astrology, an esteemed Herbod skimmed over Layla and her students' papers and then began to harshly criticize some of Layla's arguments. In the opinion of the Herbad, theoretical astrology is a sacred field of study with laws and theories that have been long crystallized by the expertise of countless researchers across the ages and cemented irrefutably by generations of testing and calculation. God damn, AKA, there's no way this shit's wrong hundreds of generations of people have confirmed it otherwise for Layla to question and even dare to correct some of the pre-accepted notions was tantamount to blasphemy imagine hearing a lie so many times that you think it's true and then someone's like no this is actually wrong and then you get upset about it Layla did not respond to the criticism in the heat of the moment, however. Instead, she listed her detailed arguments in a report after the seminar and submitted it to the Herbad. Not long after, the Herbad attached his refutation to Layla's report and returned it to her. By this point, most students would choose to accept the status quo. In one respect, failing to get a passing score for this semester report would result in major negative effects on her finals. Furthermore, it was most presumptuous for students to argue matters of academic validity with a Herbad, for any Herbad was far more refined than a mere student, whereas it be in terms of knowledge and seniority after all. Perhaps the arguments Layla made questioning long accepted doctrine was simply resulted in a miscalculation on her part, and she might have been humiliated in the end on account of being mistaken. Even so, she did not give up. She continued her discourse with the Herbad using her reports. Then, with the passing of half a year, <laughs> oh god, the Herbad went to find Layla once more. He admitted then that after consulting more researchers, he had discovered a point of non-acceptability in the long accepted doctrines that had been left unexamined by the broader community aka layla was right put some respect on her name as he concluded his explanations he told layla with pride and emotion that the students who dared challenged him for the sake of knowledge had grown fewer by the years 
The inception of education for students or her bad alike is to seek knowledge in its purest form. Layla, in her persistence, had reminded him at length of this pursuit of enlightenment. After the conclusion of the seminars, as Layla was going through her bag that held the document she had accrued during her exchange with the Herbad, she spontaneously discovered a gleaming vision in her bag's depths. It lay there upon a thick stack of notes like a fallen star pressed onto the paper. Let's go. Yeah, that's I actually really liked that. I liked how it's almost kind of like what her first story quest mentioned. It says when seeking knowledge, talent is useful, but perseverance is essential. And she's persistent. She doesn't back down when she thinks she's right or she has like conclusive evidence to back up what she's saying. And she doesn't let people walk all over her or tell her she's wrong. Mind you, it took half a year. It took like half a year for her to be validated in what she was saying. And she didn't hold a grudge either. She didn't like put him on the spot. She just like wrote a paper to him. He wrote a paper back. A little time passed he was like oh shit i'm actually wrong my bad and he was cool about it so i really respect that like that whole exchange all right let's get into the dialogue oh, hi i'm layla a retawa student uh, hmm? oh, sorry i didn't sleep well last night so i'm a bit out of it today what did you say again you you want to team up with me no 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 it's not that i don't want to i'm just not sure my crazy sleep schedule will really work for you, but, uh, I guess I look forward to working with you. Same. <laughs> I've never met a more relatable character in my life. <laughs> oh my god. Yo, crazy sleep schedule? Yo, nice to meet you. Bro, that's literally me right now, dude. I've been going... I've been going to bed at the most degenerate of hours lately. And it always happens. I, I go on these degen benders. I go to bed at like 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. Give me like two weeks. I'll fix my sleep schedule. It'll last like three days. And then I'll be back to that sleep schedule again. It's so ridiculous. Even when we're not looking up at the stars, they're always there. Oh, watching over us. My legs are so sore. Oh, guess I must have been sleepwalking last night. Again. Damn, that's the worst, man. Like, give yourself a break. Oh, why do I have to write so many papers? Why? I I feel bad for her. Whenever I whenever she says this, I feel so bad. Like she literally sounds like she's being tortured on a daily basis at the school with the with the amount of work she has to do. And she doesn't get any sleep. Oh, the weather's terrible. Shoot, if I can't see the sky tonight, uh, I really can't put off my star mapping homework any longer. Damn. Oh, the snow is sparkling. Uh, just like the stars in the night sky. Hmm. Hmm. The sun's making me so oh, sleepy. Okay, let me grab a pillow and rest my eyes before this wears off. It's been two, two days since I last, last. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed, chat. Good night. But imagine I like actually fell asleep though. I'm gonna be the next fucking like uh, resident sleeper emote. All right, all right, all right. Oh, scorching hot days and freezing cold nights. Jeez. I, I, I don't think I'm gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Did you get enough sleep? Uh, if you're still tired, you should go back to sleep for a bit. Me? Uh, I'm used to it. That's literally everybody ever for all time. Like, five more minutes, please. Uh, I'm in the middle of a stellar kinematics calculation right now. Just go to lunch without me. Oh my god. Uh, wait, this... This angle isn't right. No, no, no. Shoot. 
How far in was I when this mistake crept in? Damn, this poor girl. I'm getting depressed just hearing her talk. <sighs> I'm going to turn in early tonight. Hope I can actually get to sleep. Dear mighty god of wisdom, please bless my slumber, I pray. <laughs> Okay. Oh my god. Closing my eyes now. Alright. Does she not... I wonder if she... Like, does she... I guess she still sleeps, but she just doesn't get... Her body doesn't, like, recover because she, she's in constant motion day and night. This poor girl. Yo, Nahida, do something. <sighs> right. Let's see what stumped Daylight Layla this time. Oh my... Hmm. Whoa. She hasn't touched <gasps> the third year of old Starlax yet. No fucking way. That's what she sounds like when she's well rested. That's her that's her other side. <sighs> right. Let's see what stumped Daylight Layla this time. Hmm. <gasps> she hasn't what? touched the third year old Starlax yet. They definitely need working through. And there's a few charts to be appended to the midterm report, which Yep, she hasn't even started drawing up yet. I'm... All right, time to get to work. Oh, huh? What are you doing up? Uh... You should be asleep right now. <laughs> Me? Sleepwalking, of course. Damn, she caught us, chat. Run! <laughs> Dude! No, no, no. So, so this is her ambitious... So, like, we just read in her lore that, like, she has two sides of her. She's got, like, the woeful... Oh, my gosh, my life is... My life is never ending suffering. I, I'm always tired. I'm always working. I'm always doubting myself. And then when she goes to sleep, her sleepwalking side wakes up and she's just like, all right, I can do this. I'm the fucking best there ever was. I'm literally goaded for all time. I can do this. I, 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 I can help. I got you, Layla. I got you, daytime me. And she's popping off and she's doing all her homework. But like, I didn't know that they would apply it in the dialogue so when she started talking i was like oh she sounds a little normal like she doesn't sound i'm so tired i'm so sleepy like she actually sounds normal that really surprised i did not think they would do that that's actually incredible that is so cool oh, according to my <laughs> textbook using theoretical astrology to solve specific problems in our daily lives should not be our primary goal mm. but whether we should or not the real reason nobody does it is that well it's just it's not worth the effort true when we do a prediction we usually have to use multiple celestial globes and consult at least one whole year's worth of star charts to get any Precise answers. Jesus. To go through all that just to find out whether the price of spices <laughs> will go up tomorrow. I mean, it's just not worth it. Damn. I mean, who's forcing this girl to do year-long theses on the price of spices for the next day? Thank God we reformed this academia. They better not be putting this girl through the ringer still. Dude, I feel like that's what it was like to do homework before the internet. Oh, don't get me wrong, okay? I was born into the age of the internet, but I still brought a textbook home with me. I was at a point, by the time I hit middle school, I was at the point where I could go to my school's library and use the school's computer, like to print out stuff that I needed. Like I was still in that fortunate camp early on. I think even my elementary schools had computers for that. But like by middle school, we already had computers in our middle schools where you could use the internet to get answers for shit that you needed. So I'm just thinking like, bro, I can't imagine doing like a fucking dead ass like research paper, like a freaking thesis and you don't have the internet, like fucking some like 1950s shit or something. I don't know. Since I found something I like and that I'm good at, I, I think I should try and stick with it. Even if the journey is difficult and even if the competition is fierce and even if there's no guarantee I'll graduate and... <laughs> Even if I have to return all my scholarships if I fail my final exams. <sighs> Maybe I should just drop out and go back home. Oh my god, Layla, please. You're literally depressing me right now. I feel so bad for this girl. She's like, yeah, maybe, I, maybe I'm not cut out for this life. Maybe I should just stop while I'm ahead. I agree. I don't like having to pull an all-nighter to catch up on schoolwork either, but... 
They just keep piling on the assignments, don't this they? This is so good. That's how things go here. So obviously I have to help her out. <laughs> Wanna keep me company? Guys, do you know what Hoyoverse should do right now? They should create nighttime dialogue for Layla. So if you're ever out in the world of Tavat, like, you know, like how she has idle dialogue when she's talking, they should have it to where it's the tired Layla dialogue at, during the day. And then at night, it's this Layla talking. That would be so fucking cool. I actually love the fact that they that they put the effort into having both of them in the dialogue here. That's really cool. I think that's just nice attention to detail. I was not expecting this level of attention to hear sleepwalking Layla during certain situations. That's so cool. If I don't end up staying at the academia after graduation, I think I'll come travel the world with you. What do you think? Oh my gosh, you're way ahead of us. You're already in my party. Let's go. <sighs> oh, where's that glowing coming from? <laughs> I could have sworn I turned the lights off before I fell asleep. Oh, it's just my vision. <clears throat> no wonder. Oh, wait, but didn't, didn't I leave this on my nightstand? So they actually glow too? Like they have a light. That's like, you can use your vision as like a flashlight or something or like a light source. That's interesting. The chief editor of our Darshan keeps dialogues that show the fates of all living beings. They are, without a shadow of a doubt, the apex of astronomical knowledge. What? A star log shows the fates of all living beings. Wait, is a star log like everyone's astrological fate is that what mona refers to when she's like yeah i see the stars like i can pull up someone's fate with my divination is that what she's basically doing she's pulling up their star log the chief editor of our darshan keeps star logs that show the fates of all living beings chief editor they are without a shadow of a doubt the apex of astronomical knowledge wow the first time i saw one i was scared speechless <laughs> Uh -huh. Are you interested? If you just want to take a quick look, let me put in an application for you. I think it should be fine. Uh, I think. So you could find out the fate of every living being on the planet. I don't think Aether has a star log because we're not even from this world. But if Lumine's from this world, does Lumine have a star log? Does Dainsleaf has a have a star log? Does Kaya have a star log? Does Albedo have a star? You know what I mean? So she's seen one. She said she saw one and it scared her speechless. So she probably saw the fate of somebody that wasn't all that great. That's insane. How the fuck do you have a star log of? So you have a star log of like a random like freaking dusk bird in the jungle. Every live, all living beings, the Sumter beasts. God, that's so interesting. What the hell? <sighs> Are there any plants that can catch bugs? Because if so, I need their help. I don't fall asleep easily to begin with, but now there's this little flying bug somewhere in my room. <clears throat> the buzzing is so loud and it never stops. But I. I've tried, but I just can't find it. <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh, she knows Mona? Mona Magistus, the astrologist. I mean, I it's understandable. She's world-renowned. Mona Magistus, the astrologist. Her astrology column in the Steambird is yep. well-known among Ritawa, his scholars. Her articles always cover super-specialized topics, but can still be appreciated by non-academics. That's no easy feat. Huh? Her name seems to just roll off my tongue? Oh! Uh, that's just <laughs> because I I have a lot of respect for uh, amazing people. Uh-huh. She's a big fan, guys. Of course she knows who Mona is. Lisa! Oh, I know who you're talking about. Ooh. Lisa Minchi. The legendary Spontamod. Lisa Mincy or Minchi. Yeah, we rarely hear Lisa's last name in the game, which is pretty interesting that she knows her full name. I mean, well, she graduated from the academia, so of course. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Lisa Minchi, the legendary Spontamod prodigy who graduated in just two years. She graduated in two years. What the fuck? That is wild, bro. That is crazy. These motherfuckers are at this school for God knows how long. Some of them will never graduate. 
Some of them are li literally just going on wild goose chase. She graduated in two years. Oh, I know who you're talking about. God damn. Lisa Minchi, the legendary Spontamod prodigy who graduated in just two years. Oh my god. <laughs> if only I had her brains. Huh? <laughs> you met her in person when you were in Mondstadt? R really? So, what's her studying process like? Mm -hmm. What books does she read and what kind of work does she do? Where, where should I start if I, if I want to learn from her? She's a lazy librarian that likes having tea a lot. And if you uh, don't return her library book, she'll zap the fuck out of you with her, with her vision. So, uh, she's big chilling now, you know? She's put in the work two years, actually a fucking master at her craft. So she was in the Spontamod, which is elementalism. Elementalism is the uh, is the darshan that focuses on like the seven elements govern the seven like govern all life in the world. Oh, D Dory, uh, um, I I took the plunge and bought something from her once. Uh oh. She looked euphoric as I was settling the bill. <laughs> I think she assumed I was some sort of mega rich person kept relentlessly sending product ads to me in the mail god afterwards. damn it <laughs> biggest mistake of my life got him i paid such a huge price for it because not only did i spend all of my scholarship money in one go but for most of the next year i had to survive mainly on cheap vegetables and i couldn't buy textbooks unless they were on sale <laughs> dory needs to be stopped She's taking advantage of anything that has money, anything that jingles, anything that looks like it has money. She's like, too bad, so sad. Get scammed, nerd. Moving on. Damn, and she hit her with all of the freaking product ads in the mail. Like, God, man. The General Mahamatra is really good at Genius Invocation TCG. Ooh. Oh. I wonder if, I mean, if I ever got the chance, maybe <laughs> I could play a game with him. Card games like Genius and Vacation TCG are always easier when you're good at mental math. So actually, I, I don't know, but I might not necessarily lose to him. <laughs> She's a human cow. Bro, I better not face it off against Layla in Genius Invocation TCG. Layla's gonna be like, hey, let's meet at night in Mondstadt for Genius Invocation TCG. I would get swept, bro. At night? That means that's her it's her it's her sleepwalking version, who's like galaxy brain. Like actually like the best version of her possible. I'm not beating her. I'm not beating her. Definitely not. <laughs> I don't think anyone is. And she's a calculator. Huh. I saw someone who matches that description when I woke up <laughs> after sleepwalking for the first time. Jesus. Candace, huh? Now I know. I still remember the moment I woke up. All of my reports and essays were done. At that time, it felt like... Like, after pleading to the stars for days and days, now... Now they'd finally heard me and sent a messenger to help me. Oh? Huh? I... I felt so touched. I saw someone who matches the description when I woke up after sleepwalking for the first time. Oh, she thought Candace helped her with her paper. I see. Damn, she freaking slept walk from the academia all the way to Aru Village? Is that what happened? <laughs> Interesting. I'll hate them. I bet someone who's good enough to get a job like Scribe never has to worry about whether their projects will get approved. <laughs> Or be successful. Mm. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, shoot. If he's a scribe, he probably doesn't have to do any projects in the first place. So lucky. Damn. Dear mighty god of wisdom, I've been studying late into the night for days on end. Please let me pass this exam. Please. Please. Damn, Layla. <laughs> Give this girl a break, please. I beg of you. My god. Ooh, Farazan. Has Professor Farazan managed to- Madam Farazan! Madam- Professor Madam Farazan to you. Has Professor Farazan managed to get any students? People from the Haravatat Darshan say that she always has difficulty getting funding for her projects. So it's hard for her to attract students, too. Damn. 
Hmm. Unlucky. I'm not naturally talented, nor am I a fast learner. You shut I your mouth right now. Yes, you are. You are naturally talented. You and you are a fast learner. I'm not naturally talented, nor am I a fast learner. I only got into the academia by studying like crazy for the entrance exam. <laughs> oh shoot, I, I'm sorry, I can't chat right now. Mentioning the academia reminds me that my academic progress support is due soon. <laughs> and I still haven't got any progress to write about yet. Oh, just go take a nap, I'm sure you'll be fine. My relationship with my advisor? Uh, um, uh, how, how should I put it? Oh, don't get me wrong. She's been good to me. She she even gave me a recommendation when I started at the school. And every time I feel like I just can't go on, she's there to give me some, some much-needed encouragement. Hmm. And then to assign me another essay right after. Yeah, she's like, all right, you good? All right, now get back to work. We need the... That scholarship money's not going to grow on trees. Almost all of Sumeru's best and brightest have attended the academia, and there are a ton of scarily intelligent international students, too. Ooh, international. So you can imagine how competitive it is here. Studying alongside some of these people, sometimes it makes me wonder, mm -hmm. am I really cut out for this? Yo, sit down. Be humble. That's all she's out here doing. She's sitting down, she's being humble, and she's bodying everybody. Shh, be quiet. Don't wake her up. Just let her sleep peacefully. Ooh. Who's her? Ah, well, a very weary Layla who's constantly stressed about her schoolwork, of course. <laughs> and me? <laughs> I'm Layla, too. Gosh, that's so cool that she has, like, two sides of her. That's sick. I've heard people say she thinks a blessing from the stars is the reason why all of her outstanding schoolwork gets magically finished while she's asleep. <laughs> uh, she has absolutely no idea. Oh, but seriously, don't tell her, okay? Yeah, I know. Imagine that. Be like, hey, I had a full-blown conversation with your other self. You're amazing. You can do anything. She's got you, fam. God, I love that. Drawing star charts is really tiring work. I really don't think I'd be able to keep at it if it wasn't something I'm interested in. Layla the second. We have to use a ruler, then do some calculations on paper, then check past star logs. Before you know it, the whole day is gone. But then, when I look at the finished product, a huge, neatly drawn, accurate map of the stars. It always gives me a huge sense of accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Layla more like Bela, am I right, chat? There we go. Yeah. <clears throat> Is this thing on? Do you, you guys hear me? Is this thing on? Hold on. Do you guys hear me? <laughs> I slept okay-ish before I came to the academia, but since I started my studies... Oh, there's so much pressure. <laughs> I just want to be able to sleep the whole night through. <laughs> Someone was like, unfortunately, yes, the mic is on. <laughs> all right. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Wait, hold on. I see all the murder bros in chat. Are you guys telling me that I need to explain the joke to you in detail? Or did you guys understand the joke and you found it funny? Which one is it? Because I can explain it in grave detail. Exquisite detail. I need the most detail possible. All right. <clears throat> so the reason why I said Bela is because her name is Layla. But we need to have an identity for the second Layla. So by having an identity for the second Layla, I didn't want it to be too far off from what her normal name is. So I want Layla to be the tired one, and Bela is going to be the second one. Also, it's Bela because Bay, you know, like, you know, that's usually what you call someone that you find to be like you're smitten over, you're like, yo, like that she's Bay. So she's Bay La, and it's different from Layla. So. <clears throat> oh, brother, this guy stinks! Every night before I go to bed, I make myself a glass of warm milk in the hope I'll sleep well tonight. The hope I'll sleep well tonight. 
hope I'll sleep well tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This entire like character dialogue section has just been about like sleeping. Also, I'm not a fan of warm milk. Like at all. Like, no thank you. Someone once told me about a mysterious merchant who was selling really effective sleep gummies. It cost all my scholarship money. Oh no! All the other more I'd saved up. But I bought some. Dory scammed you again! I slept like a baby, but. There are 200,000 more a box. I can't afford that. I, I can't let myself buy them ever again. No, no way. Not even if they were buy one, get one free or, well, buy one, get two free. <laughs> mm, actually, maybe I'd consider that. Yeah, a mysterious merchant who was selling sleep gummies at 200,000 more a box. I don't know, man. Dory's out here. She's a parasite a little bit. Not gonna lie. Anyways. Also, I got Layla to level 90 and I heard her ascension dialogue at the time when I was leveling her up after I pulled on the gotcha for her. I hate, I do not like how much she like drags herself. She's like, Layla, what do you think you're doing? Get your shit together. All right. You could, we, we got shit we got to do. And I'm like, bro, you can barely get sleep. You barely can stand. Like what the hell? Get it together, Layla. You've got to work harder. I was I was listening to that, and I'm like, damn, this girl is so hard on herself. I hate it. Get it together, Layla. You're doing well so far, but you've still got a lot to learn. Yeah. Get it together! Get it together, Layla. You've been studying hard and reading everything you could get your hands on. Well done. But you can't afford to suck off now. The moment you get lazy... You'll fall behind and end up having to postpone your graduation. <laughs> Spare yourself the humiliation. Yo, rap god. Graduation, humiliation, I love to see it. Get it together, Layla. <laughs> Believe in yourself and in the person who's helped you come this far. The two of you together can solve any problem that comes your way. Hmm. <sighs> All right. Time to leave my worries behind. Let's go. Let's go. Get it together, Layla. Get your head in the game. All right. I love this. I love how she has two personalities. I love how it's, uh, I don't know. I just love her determination. We don't really have a character like her. That's just like, I don't like myself. I feel like I'm, I, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. And low key, they're doing the best out of anybody. I also love that she has two personalities both equally, you know, trying to do the best that they can. Was really surprised that they added those voice lines in of like the nighttime Layla or Bela or whatever that uh that kind of like helps her out in the meantime. Didn't realize it was another personality because like when you see her like idle animation when she's just standing still like writing, like I thought that's how it was. I thought she was just like in like a stupor, like a, just like do it like like a zombie or something like that. But then it's just like, oh no, she's straight up talking to us. I thought that was really cool. But yeah, uh, Layla was great. I really, really liked how that played out. Aether, my boy, you learned something new. All characters lore have been officially read. So the next time I'll be doing this is when I get Wanderer and Faruzan to friendship six or higher, which is probably going to be at some point after I finish the Archon quest. So um, this was great. I loved it.